We are so wonderfully close. At this point, unless I've lost track of something, I believe the only part we have left to object orientify in our colors example is the destroy page. I'm sure right now the destroy page isn't going to work because when I look at the code for the destroy page, the very first thing at the top of it is a requirement for a file that no longer exists. Let me go ahead and change that over to our actual color file itself. After that, our destroy page then is basically going through, preparing itself to open the file to load colors, making sure we have an ID, all the same sort of things we've seen quite a few times. Maybe what I'm going to do with this page is let's kind of just go ahead and turn it into what I want it to be. I think what I'd like to do for this page is maybe start off just by loading all my colors. Could I just say get all my colors by doing color colon colon all and then maybe destroy the color that I actually want to destroy? Well, if I'm going to do that, actually, maybe I don't even need the all. Maybe I should just find the one color that's supposed to be destroyed. The destroy page is supposed to be passed an ID. So let me get from the get array the ID of the color we're supposed to destroy. That'll give it to me there. And then what if I could just say color destroy, basically just wipe itself out. I imagine that's probably a situation where that could maybe succeed or fail. Maybe we should do something like uh, if the destroy works, then we could redirect back to the index page. I'll say uh, header location index.php. It would be nice to give the user a message there. We'll figure out how to do that eventually. Uh, so if destroy happens, that's what we'll do. If destroy fails for some reason, then I suppose we'll still want to redirect the user back to the index page. At that point though, We'd want to redirect them with some type of error message. I'll just say error 999 for right now. It's something that we'll be able to see in the URL to be able to tell if destroy has failed. But other than that, that's kind of the way I would like for it to look. Other than that, there shouldn't be much of anything else that I actually need to do here. So I'm going to just wipe out the rest of my destroy file. Something else just occurred to me, and that's the possibility that find could return false. If we don't actually get a color back, then trying to call destroy on it is going to cause an error. So what if I say if we have a color and we call destroy? So this has to be true and we then have to successfully destroy the color in order for us to go back to the index page normally. But if destroy fails or if we can't find a color at all, then at that point we go back to the index page with an error. That's generally the way I'd like the destroy page to function. All I need to do then is to actually make this destroy function in the color class work. So back over in the color class, I have my save function, I have my update function. How about I add a destroy function? There's my destroy function. My destroy function wasn't gonna be past anything. It's just supposed to destroy the color that it's called for. In order to destroy the color it's called for, we're going to need to remove it from the colors array. So let's make sure that all the colors are loaded. I'll call self all, the all function, the static all function for the color class. That will load all the colors. At that point in self colors, all of the colors should actually be there. And what I would wanna do then is I would want to unset from that array the color that has that's at position of this color's ID. So if this color, the color I'm destroying's ID is 9, then at position 9 in my colors array, I'm going to unset that thing so that that color will be gone. It'll no longer be part of the color array. Once that is done, we could then save everything. So I'll do self save all. Self save all will succeed or fail. If it succeeds, we'll just return whatever value it gives back, a true or false, and then that will determine whether we consider the destroy to have been successful or not. Pretty short little method, just basically building on everything that we've done before. Self.all is already there for us. Save all is already there for us. So overall, that should make things relatively easy. Let's see how it works. If I wanted to destroy my snow color here, let me give it a shot. It's brought me right back to the index and I don't see an error message up there and the snow color is gone. I think we have succeeded. One more, just to be sure, I'm gonna get rid of the color yellow here. Again, I don't see any error in my URL and the color yellow is gone. So with that, I do believe that we have successfully implemented our destroy page in an object-oriented way. I also hope at that point that we've done a good job of going through all of our pages and changing them over to an object-oriented way of working. We've definitely built ourselves a nice little color class at this point. 
all the basic functionality in it that's needed for us to be able to manage not even just a specific individual color, but actually even a collection of colors by, be, by using these different static functions that we've put together. Hopefully we've put everything in this class that we need to, so in the future, if we decide that we want to make any kind of fundamental change to the way that colors are stored, maybe we decide to store them as binary data in a file instead of as text data. There should now only be one thing we have to do in order to make that happen, and that would be to modify the color class. The index page, the show page, the new page, the edit page, the destroy page should all stay exactly the same. It'll only be the color class that changes. The color class should at this point be a proper model, meaning that it is the only part of my application that actually touches the data storage for this particular object. Success!